Moving on to the microscopic structure of skeletal muscle. And the most important part of a muscle is the muscle fibers or the muscle cells themselves. So a muscle fiber or a muscle cell is a long cylindrical multinucleated cell made up of many myofibrils. Surrounding each muscle fiber is the sarcolemma, which is the plasma membrane of a muscle cell. Surrounding the sarcolemma is then the endomesium. Within the sarcolemma, so within that muscle cell plasma membrane, are thousands of tiny infoldings or indents called transverse or T-tubules. These indents tunnel in from the surface of the membrane towards the center of each muscle fiber. Because the T-tubules are open to the outside of the muscle fiber, they're actually filled with interstitial fluid. When a muscle fiber is stimulated, so it receives an action potential from a motor neuron, that action potential in the muscle travels along the sarcolemma and through the T-tubules, quickly spreading through the muscle fiber. This arrangement of the T-tubules ensures that an action potential will excite or stimulate all parts of the muscle fiber at essentially the same time. Within the sarcolemma or within the muscle cell is also the sarcoplasm. And the sarcoplasm is just the cytoplasm of the muscle fiber. The sarcoplasm includes a large amount of glycogen, which is a stored form of glucose. So the glycogen and the glucose will help the muscle produce ATP. Also within the sarcoplasm, we find myoglobin, which is a special type of protein only found in muscles, which help bind to oxygen, which diffuses into the muscle through those capillaries. So to point out some of those structures to you on an image, and so our muscle fiber or muscle cell is this part here, made up of our many myofibrils. And the muscle fiber is surrounded by our sarcolemma, which is just the plasma membrane of a muscle cell. Surrounding or encapsulating that muscle cell and the sarcoplasm is the endomesium. So that's this one here. So we've got the uh, sarcolemma is the plasma membrane of that muscle fiber or cell. And then surrounding that is that connective tissue layer that we call the endomesium. Within the sarcolemma are thousands of infoldings or indents, which we call T-tubules. So you can see the T-tubule here. If this is the sarcolemma, we have those indents going to wrap around each of our myofibrils. These are those interstitial field channels that run deep into the muscle fiber to help spread an incoming muscle action potential. Now looking at the components which make up a muscle fiber, so we're going smaller and deeper within the muscle now. And within the muscle fiber or the muscle cell are many myofibrils, which are the contractile organelles of skeletal muscle. Myofibrils are only very, very narrow in diameter, but they extend the entire length of the muscle. Their prominent striations, which are those stripes, which we'll speak more about shortly, is what gives the skeletal muscle that stripy appearance. Now, wrapped around each myofibril is a fluid-filled system of membranous sacs, which we call the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is similar to the smooth endoplasmic reticulum in cells that are not muscle cells. The dilated ends of the sarcoplasmic reticulum are called terminal cisterns, and they butt up against the T-tubule on either side. In a relaxed muscle, the sarcoplasmic reticulum stores calcium ions. When that muscle is stimulated, the release of calcium ions from the terminal cisterns of the sarcoplasmic reticulum is what will trigger muscle contraction. So again, looking at those structures now on an image, and this is our myofibril here. This 
is our zoomed in version down the bottom. And remember, lots of myofibrils will make up a muscle fiber or muscle cell. Wrapped around each myofibril is a sarcoplasmic reticulum. So that's this yellow structure here, and then also in this image here, here, and here. And the dilated ends of the sarcoplasmic reticulum are called the terminal cistern, or terminal cisternae as a single. So that's this part here, and here, and here, and here. And you can see that they lie either side of our T-tubule. Together, the two terminal cisternae and the T-tubule form what we call a triad. Now, in a relaxed muscle, this sarcoplasmic reticulum will store calcium ions. When that muscle is stimulated, which remember will run through the sarcolemma and down those T-tubules, calcium is released from these terminal cisterns. Now again, continuing to look deeper and deeper into the muscle, and a myofibril is made up of smaller protein structures called filaments or myofilaments. Thin filaments are unsurprisingly the thinner of the two filaments and are mostly made up of the protein actin. The thick filaments are thicker in diameter and are mostly composed of the protein myosin. Both our thin and our thick filaments are directly involved in muscle contraction. Now, the filaments of a myofibril do not extend the entire length of a muscle. So our myofibrils do extend the length of a muscle, but not the filaments within that myofibril. Instead, they are arranged into sections called sarcomeres. And a sarcomere is considered the basic functional unit of a myofibril. Now, narrow Z-shaped proteins called Z-discs, which are these sections here and here, sit at the end of each sarcomere. And that's what separates one sarcomere from the next and the next. So looking at the structure of a sarcomere, and we've already established the sarcomere runs from one Z-disc to the other. The region on either side of the Z-disc is what we call the I-band. And the I-band is a lighter, less dense area of the sarcomere because it contains our thin filaments only. So our thick filament is this dark purple line running through the middle of the sarcomere. Our thin filaments are these green lines that are extending out from either side of that Z-disc. So the I-band is the region either side of our Z-disc that only contains those thin filaments. The A-band is then the darker middle zone of a sarcomere. It extends the entire length of our thick filament, so this dark purple line. And towards each end of the A-band is a zone of overlap where our thick and our thick filaments will actually lie side by side. So you can see in this section here and in this section here, we have overlap of that thick filament and that thin filament. The H-zone is this narrow region in the center of a sarcomere. This contains our thick filaments only, but no thin filaments. And in the very, very center of the sarcomere, which lies within the H-zone, it's not labeled on this image here, it's labeled um, down here, that very middle line is what we call the M-line. And so the M line anchors the thick filaments to the center of the sarcomere. So it keeps it in the center of the sarcomere, which when we start talking about how the muscle actually contracts and the sliding filament theory, you'll understand how important this is. Now, the very last structures that I want to mention, which are also the smallest components in a muscle, are some specific muscle proteins. And we have two contractile proteins, which we've already mentioned. We have myosin, which forms most of the thick filament, 
and actin, which forms most of the thin filament. So myosin is this protein here, making up most of that thick filament. It runs through the center of each sarcomere and it's anchored to the middle of that sarcomere by the M line. Now, each myosin molecule is shaped a little bit like two golf clubs with their handles twisted together. The ends of the myosin protein, which is the part that looks like the head of a golf club, so these end bits here, they project out from the center of the sarcomere. And again, when we start talking about muscle contraction in the next lot of lecture recordings, it's these myosin heads which will bind to actin for contraction to occur. Our actin is in this part here. It's the protein that makes up most of our thin filaments. And the thin filaments are anchored to the end of each sarcomere by these Z discs. On each actin molecule is a myosin binding site where the myosin head can then attach. Now looking at this bottom image, which is a zoomed in version of our thin filament. And we have two regulatory proteins called tropomyosin and troponin. And in a relaxed muscle, myosin is blocked from binding to actin because strands of tropomyosin, which are these brown strands along here, cover the myosin binding sites on actin. So these little dark dots on the actin molecules are the myosin binding sites. When a muscle is relaxed, this tropomyosin protein will hide those binding spots so the myosin heads and the actin can't bind. The tropomyosin strands are then in turn held in place when that muscle is relaxed by our troponin molecules, which are these blue parts here. Now again, in the next module, when we speak more about muscle contraction, we will learn that when calcium ions bind to troponin, it will change its shape. This moves tropomyosin out of the way. And so the actin and the myosin can then bind and muscle contraction can occur. So recapping some of that for you in text and giving you another a zoomed in image, and in skeletal muscle, about 300 molecules of myosin form our single thick filament here. Each myosin molecule, as I described, looks a little bit like a golf club with the, the handles all wrapped around each other and then the heads extending out toward each Z disc. Each myosin head contains a binding site for actin and a binding site for ATP. The thin filament is composed mostly of actin, as well as smaller amounts of our troponin and tropomyosin. And actin, which is our yellow part of this thin filament here, contains binding sites for myosin. And when the myosin heads and the actin bind is when our muscle contraction actually occurs. When a muscle is relaxed, myosin is blocked from binding to actin because of these strands of the tropomyosin. The tropomyosin strands are held in place by the troponin molecules.